Hi, this is James Sakalas, developer of Spiral Somatics and teacher of NLP with what some people describe as unreasonable standards. And uh, if you're watching this video right now, then you know it's about a, a course that I offer for NLP practitioners, master practitioners and trainers called Empty Handed NLP. Uh, and there's a story behind that name, but that's for another video. It's for, for people who want to take their skills and, uh, and really kind of increase their ability to adapt and improvise on the fly in any circumstance. Uh, so that, uh, you know, no matter what presents itself, so that it doesn't make any difference if, for example, you're with someone who has aphantasia, who can't make pictures, or whether you're with someone who just doesn't respond to language patterns the same way because they come from a different language pattern or they're neurodiverse or something like that. Uh, and it makes no difference if you're with someone who uh, just immediately shuts down if there's any kind of suggestion that there's any kind of unconscious aspect to their experience. And it makes no difference if you're in, a, in an environment that doesn't seem particularly conducive. You're in a crowded restaurant or a boardroom meeting or, or something like that. Or people just don't follow the script because they don't. You know, this is the, one of the drawbacks of learning NLP in a scripted kind of a way or an inflexible step-by-step -step procedural way is you learn fairly quickly that people aren't robots and they don't always follow the scripts. Things don't always work exactly as advertised. So you need to have a little bit more flexibility in terms of how to go about facilitating processes. But more than that, uh, empty-handed NLP is also about, and this is really important because not everybody's an agent of change, a therapist, a coach, a trainer, a teacher, this kind of thing. So empty-handed NLP is also about really developing your ability to adapt and to scale any NLP application pattern so that you can make use of it powerfully and effectively in a thousand different contexts for lots of different purposes. Because one of the things about the way that NLP is taught most of the time these days in most, not all, but most schools of NLP is that it's a little bit like someone comes in, they've got a, uh, like a frying pan, right? They've got some eggs in a frying pan and they go, hey, check it out. You wanna cook some eggs? Here's how you cook eggs. This is the thing that you use to cook eggs, right? This is what this is, right? And they're cooking eggs in a frying pan. And they hand you the frying pan and they hand you some eggs and you go, you have a go, right? And so you put some eggs in the frying pan and you learn, sure enough, they're right. This is the thing that you use to cook eggs and it works as advertised, it cooks eggs. And if the only thing you ever see someone do with a frying pan is cooking eggs, you could be forgiven for thinking that this is the egg cooking device or the egg cooking technique, let's say. Just because that's the thing that you've always seen done with technique, that's how it was introduced, so it's the egg cooking technique. But you and I know that if you've got a frying pan, you can cook eggs with it, yeah, but you can also cook bacon with it, you can make sauce with it. You don't even need to cook with it. If you've got a frying pan, you can carry things, you can use it as a helmet, right, or a shield, or a tennis racket, for God's sake, right? If you know the structure of something, then you can see easily and clearly and quickly lots of different things that you can do with it if you look at the structure of it rather than the name of it, rather than the, uh, the original intention that someone came to you uh, with for using this particular thing. And this is the way that a lot of NLP is taught these days. And so, classic example of this, there's a pattern that's usually presented uh, as having the purpose of resolving uh, internal incongruence, right? works great, it's a fantastic pattern. And if you learn this pattern, and if it's presented to you as this is how you resolve internal incongruence, right? how you get people congruent and firing on all, all cylinders and all of that kind of stuff, again, you could be forgiven for thinking, well, when I'm incongruent or somebody else is incongruent, then I'll use this pattern because that's what this pattern is for. But you might not necessarily recognize immediately and instantly and clearly that this same pattern works spectacularly well for negotiating with multiple stakeholders in a major project. It also works spectacularly well for resolving conflict in really heated environments. Right? There's another one that's, that's frequently presented in NLP practitioner programs that's usually presented as a, a creativity strategy. Right? That was its original intention. This thing is presented as a creativity strategy. And it works great. It's fantastic for coming up with, uh, with brilliant ideas that are robust, that are sustainable. It's fantastic. But if you think that that's all this thing is for, right? Because the name of it, it's, it's called, you know, it's got creativity strategy in the name. And you think, well, that's when I use it. Then you might miss the fact that this is also something that is spectacularly effective as a sales process. I know people who have built really effective sales training processes out of this particular process, right? Because you can use the, this is the thing about these patterns. You can, they're incredibly versatile if you look at the structure of them and what you can do with them rather than looking at their name or the way in which they're in initially presented. So this is what NLP, uh, empty-handed NLP is all about. It's learning how to adapt and scale things. It's learning how to, 
to improvise, uh, it's learning how to respond so that no matter what gets thrown at you, uh, it's all good. Because you know that uh, if you want to run the phobia cure, it's not necessary for someone to be able to visualize, for example. You know that, uh, that you don't need to elicit submodalities to run the basic belief change pattern. You know that you don't need to introduce the metaphor of parts or trance to do a six step reframe. Those things are just not necessary. They're not part of the core patterns as it were. They are elements inside techniques, but those techniques are just one way of expressing a pattern. And there's so much more than that. So if this is something that you're curious about, if this is something that um, is resonating with you and you want to find out a bit more, what I recommend is either get in touch or better yet, watch the next video because we're going to go into a bit more depth in terms of the why and the what and the how and also the who. Uh, but uh, for the moment, uh, I will thank you very much for your time and attention and uh, hope that I get to see you uh, when we start to explore empty-handed NLP.